Welcome to Look, Listen, Laugh. My guest this episode is an eight-time ARIA award-winning virtuoso. Now, for those of you thinking, what's an ARIA from overseas? It's essentially a Grammy. He's, uh, look, he's toured all over the world. I could rattle on for, for the next 20 minutes about all of his accomplishments and accolades. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We've uh, toured together on the road. In fact, we've shared hotel rooms together, but we're not gonna go there. We're gonna sit down and explore his favorite album, film, and book. So enjoy my conversation with the one and only Joseph Tawadros. <laughs> well, Sultan, I want to thank you for inviting yeah. me to your uh, your wonderful abode here. Yeah, well, thanks it's, for having me, mate. It's uh, it's good to see you again, yeah, mate. Yeah, good to see. You. <laughs> I know I piled on the kilos. I mean, you when you first met me, I was this size. You were. Yeah, you yeah. Were. And then you... I slimmed down. Fifty eight kilos, I lost. You did. And then I'm back. I'm I, back I remember again. one day answering the door, just going, <laughs> "Where's Joe?" I blame Lizzo. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's yeah. dancing around for all of us, having a good time, yeah. showing you you don't need to lose weight. Then no. you go, yeah, right, I have another burger. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when you, years ago, because you were doing boxing a lot, yeah. and you just shed the pounds like oh. nothing else. But you, an interesting thing I remember you yeah. saying, that you felt like in losing that mm. weight, you also lost a part of your identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting, I've gotten back now. Yeah. <laughs> I've got too much identity. Yeah. Got too much identity. Yeah. But uh, what do you think that is? What, what no, is no. That? I think look, it's it's a different change. Like I think I lost it very quickly in about eighteen months. So yeah. Um, you know the change. You still think you're the same size. So you know when you navigate spaces. Yeah. Sure. Can I get between those two cars or whatever? You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know. So it's a bit like that. But also, I don't think you're as funny if you're. If you're thinner. If you're thinner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th yeah. I think there is a correlation. Yeah. There should be a study made. The yeah, bigger you the are, bigger the bigger you funny. are, the funnier. Yeah. Ralphie May. <laughs> John Candy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John, John Candy. John. Uh, yeah, he, um, because I remember that day answering the door and I thought it was James. I'm like, yeah, yeah, your yeah. brother. Because I was like, also well. shaved as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You were clean cut and. There's a lot yeah. of kilos that I dropped. People yeah. didn't recognize me. It was, it was unbelievable. But anyway. Those days are behind you, me and we're back, back. You're back to old Joe. <laughs> back again <laughs> on a world tour. <laughs> so you've been touring around Australia of late? Yeah, it's, it's now, been good. Well, tell me, what, what do you, because you know, I've seen you yeah. perform with, with orchestras, I've seen yeah. you in little, um, little venues, I've seen you in all, yeah. all, all variation yeah. of venues. Yeah. Now, I have a sneaking feeling yeah. that you feel that you are best in your element when it's just solo Joe ripping yeah. it on stage. No, not really. No, 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 no. no. I mean, I, I like that, that gives element. Because, you, you know, that gives you the element to really, you know, yeah. chat and go on a yeah, go on Look, a tangent, I mean, that, that you know? gives you that sort of thing. When you're playing with other musicians and... Uh, you're responsible to their time as well. They've got to go home. <laughs> Some of them have kids. Yeah. You know, they've got to feed the kids and stuff. You can't indulge in the way you talk. But, you know, it's a stream of consciousness and you can't put a time on that. And, you know, also when I think when I play solo, I don't want to die on stage. That'd be the worst. <laughs> Somebody would be going, can we get a refund? Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, yeah, there is that responsibility of just holding the whole show. But there also, there's also the freedom of not having to really account to anyone on stage really yeah but I do like interaction and collaboration there's nothing like it because you end up being an audience on stage mm. so you end up listening to the great musicians that you have with you as well I'm not one of those guys that goes yeah I'll have a 15 minute solo shut up you know? <laughs> and there are there are musicians that are like that they don't like the band they, the band there's just to give them a solid platform for, to launch sure, them sure sure whereas I think my stuff is more inclusive more collaborative yeah but you also include 15 minute solo stand up pieces within your act. Well, I don't, well it's not <laughs> you know, my fault. You just start I never I never do that. I, it's my it's not my fault. Actually the other night they said you yeah, we have a 75 minute show so I had to write a guide oh, and just really? look okay I got to start the piece at this time. Right. And then when we got to the encore I was like oh, okay we're home and host. I went for it. <laughs> we ended up finishing late. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so Didn't matter no, anyway. yeah yeah because when you got to the encore you go that's the last piece yeah, now it's on, all done whatever. it's going to be 5 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But then things trigger you and sure. um, Sure. I think before before all this stuff was fashionable, the, uh, the you know the putting labels on things. I think I'll probably have some sort of <laughs> diagnosis waiting for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, After yeah, all sure. the years, yeah. well, I don't want to diagnose. If I went to the doctor and go, "Hey, mate, I'm you know," I've he's going to diagnose this, 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 and this. He'll yeah. diagnose everything for yeah, me. Yeah. You know, be I don't want to. Know. I'm just going to push through it. Because, yeah. You know, we, we didn't know it before. Yeah. <laughs> and my dad smacked any of that out of me anyway. Yeah. 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 Back, in the, the day, back in the day when parents had that, the healing hand. The healing hand. Yes. You know, oh, Dad, I'm depressed. <laughs> oh, I'm not, well, I'm I'll, give, I'll give you depressed. Oh, I can't go to school. I'm not feeling... <laughs> oh, well, I can go to school. <laughs> yeah, it's no a nice idea. motivator. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
right. But where do you think that you got that? Like, do you think it was that was instilled from you from your parents, the work ethic that you have? Because, like, come on, you, you've done what <laughs> twenty something albums. Yeah. You, you, you've you, you've been doing this since you were a teenager. Yeah. And also, even when you were younger, the signs yeah. were there. You were like school captain yeah. uh, at school. Like, where do you think that drive I think it's the Egyptian household. Thing. Besides the generational trauma that the, <laughs> you know that it provides an escape from. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think the Egyptians, the Coptic Egyptians, anyway. Um, you know, but the Egyptian household that I was brought up in, they really pushed for that. You know, you had to mm. be the best. You have to try and be the best. But also, in terms of music, I played a Middle Eastern instrument, mm. and I've got an Australian accent. I'm an Aussie. In Australia, I didn't want to feel that uh, I didn't want to, um, you know, feel like I did couldn't answer anything or I couldn't. I, I wanted to be up as the, the same guys in the Middle East. So that mm. that makes you overcompensate, makes you work harder. Sure. I think because you go, oh, I want to cut it with those guys. Sure. But then sometimes you go over there and you realize some people in the Middle East are also terrible players. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean because you're from a certain. <laughs> no, they didn't region. have to work that hard. It's like Australian jazz players. Australian jazz players are amazing. They go, yeah. oh yeah, but New York has got a thing. And then you go yeah. to New York. Yeah, there's also players that are not great in New York. You sure, know, sure. just because you're from a region. It doesn't mean that you're automatically uh, good on that instrument, but there are, of course, nuances of sound and the way things do, uh, people do things. So, but I think in Australia we're very blessed with a, a wealth of um, great uh, musicianship, and we work sure. hard at it. But not just musicianship. I think we're always trying to prove ourselves because we're so far away. But, yeah. but it's interesting you say New York because you've gone to New York a lot mm. to do recordings yeah. and use musicians. From yeah, because the they're States. worse. No, <laughs> 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 they made you, they made you look better. Yeah. <laughs> no, again, it's a different sound, and and it's actually when when I go to New York, I'm getting an experience. I'm getting the player. They happen to live there, but I yeah. could go anywhere. I could go to Mozambique if that player was there. Because right. you know, putting together projects and collaborations, you have to have a good team, and that's that's at the end of the day, it's it's like that you're a CEO of a company. If you're a band leader, you get the you know the workforce. You know what everyone does well, and you assign them those sure. jobs, and then you know. You, you do what you, um, you know, you either make that company grow <laughs> or it crashes. Yeah, and that's exactly yeah. how it is. Yeah. You know, you're growing, you're doing something and that's what good companies are. I'm not saying that the music is a company, but it is like that framework, I think. Sure, sure. Well, those musicians, I remember, was it the, um, the Chameleon album yeah. that you did? Um, yeah, that went. Yeah. But, but the, you had some great musicians. Yeah, yeah. I remember that was like, when, well, I remember hearing the demo when you brought it back. Yeah, yeah. I remember you were in the car. You were yeah, in the convertible car and you cranked it up. <laughs> Crank it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was always yeah. good to get a test. But it's, it, again, you get the players. And that you know, that album in particular had weird instruments on it. It was just showing that you could do But yeah, But it was all blended it. perfectly. Yeah, you had banjo, but tuba, you, accordion, yeah, yeah. You know, vibraphone, all these vibraphone. instruments. I remember like the vibraphone. Hammond organ. Yeah. You know, so it was a mishmash of instruments, but we made it work. But it does show that how how your style of playing can work within so many different genres as well. Yeah, but well, again, you know. once you know who you're playing with, then you can compose Adjust to, their, to, that. to their strengths. Right, You right. know what I mean? Some people go, oh, i got that player, so I'm going to give them something they can't play. You know, what's so, the point? So with that album, you knew who you were wanting yeah, to work yeah, with. So you wrote, so, so you adjusted yourself yeah, to that of course. Style. Well, yeah. I mean, within my framework as well. It's not like I'm some sort of genius. It's just like I, I listen and I go, okay, this is what this person does and I think they'll be great at this. And then they bring their own experience. You know, right. the, the little you say with people that are great musicians and, and artists in general, the better. You know, yeah. they don't want to be, they just want a little bit, of, they want a road map and then they want to be free Let within free that. Within yeah, that. and that's the yeah. way it is. I don't like that. You know, somebody, you know, I'm happy to follow uh, orders, you yeah. know, if they really need it. But at the end of the day, you have a certain vision and um, if you trust that other person's vision and we know what we're doing, then, yeah. you know, you'll get results. Yeah. I remember with that album, thinking back in the day, and I remember saying to you, I'd love to see this live. Mm. But you're saying, to get all those musicians <laughs> yeah, together, yeah. When you can't it's do it. It's yeah, a, yeah, you need an endless budget. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, look, uh, at some point, maybe when I double the size, and it's Joe <laughs> Tawadra's farewell tour. You know, that Everyone wheel me comes out. out. I come out on a mobility scooter. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Barry, White, Barry yeah. White had the revolving stage. That's right. Do you remember yeah, that? The last People time complained. Was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't have to move, head. just turned. It's his back of his head. You know what I mean? You don't want to see the back of my head. It's terrible. Uh, but that's, I said to James the other day, I was on stage. I was like, James has moved behind me. It's like I've gotten so fat that now he's, he's behind he's me. In the peripheral. <laughs> I was like, I've got to move further back. <laughs> got to have my back backstage. <laughs> Now, for those of you that don't know, James is an incredible musician as well. Mm. Like he's, the, the, the sounds that he can get out of that wreck is yeah. just uh, is yeah, so a phenomenal. We'll probably explain the wreck is the Egyptian tambourine. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a very common percussive instrument, but it's played in a different way. It's like a drum kit. But I mean, when people think tambourine, they just think, you know, kumbaya. You yeah, know, but, but that, like, the, he can make that 
he, the wrecks sound like like it's a, a drum kit. Yeah, yeah, it's and incredible. that's the idea. I mean, he's the the percussion man in the group. I never really have any other percussionists, so yeah, yeah, he's holding it down. But he's a genius, and we've had a long relationship. And he kind of just tries to well, yeah, make yeah, out of with the you've joke. Had a long relationship with yeah. your brother. <laughs> I know it's, it's going on all, thirty years. We've been playing together thirty years. Yeah. you know, wow. but it's about you know he but he tries to blank out. He likes that persona. Or when I'm making the jokes. Uh, I've noticed yeah. that on stage. Like he'll, he'll he'll notice something really interesting up in the rafters somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. No, but he likes to do that. He likes to keep the straight man, like Harpo Marx. Well, the, the dynamic works. Yeah, it know? works. That's the yeah. that's the sort of thing. But especially too, when he's playing too, it's like he goes into a zone as well. Yeah, I that's mean, a... you all have to go into your zone. I mean, I, I I as much as I seem like I'm not because of the jokes and the banter and stuff, yeah, I yeah. do go into. Well, yeah, a zone. you take it seriously when. Yeah, you're playing. oh yeah, the yeah, music. Yeah. Take look. The, the, I I heard it early on. Somebody said it was on like some random. ABC radio interview and they said take the music seriously and not yourself mm. or well, there's something else seriously and not yourself and I thought yeah I could yeah, apply yeah, that to music it. that's good so um, I think that's the sentence that's always stuck with me you yeah. know what I mean why, why would you take yourself seriously it's those artists that think they're someone you know what I mean it probably yeah. comes from the classical world you yeah, know what I mean sure, jazz musicians sure. they've had to like fight for it world musicians they come from environments that have had to fight for it yes. like, classical music yeah. I'm classical <laughs> come on mate relax buddy <laughs> Get it, just chill out, you know? <laughs> that attitude doesn't exist as much now with social media and stuff like that. Right. You know, you have to be a little bit more funny and, you know, personable and yeah. stuff like that because you've got to get the market and sure, all, sure. The, all that. But I think uh, classical musicians with that attitude is very much that elitist. And did you find that initially when get, going into the classical field? No, because I worked with great musicians that didn't have that attitude. Right, and right. anyone anyone that doesn't have that attitude is going to invite you into a project. Right. That elitist... Pompous, You're not going to work with anyone. They won't ask you. Yeah, they yeah, won't ask sure, you. They go, oh, it's sure. Mozart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <There's> Beethoven. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is the music of Elga. Yeah. Mate, just chill out, buddy. <laughs> yeah. All right, mate. You know, and, and that's what I find. Like, the music doesn't correspond with some of the, uh, you know, that attitude. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't know. Sometimes I feel like with that genre, not to diss the genre so much, because mm. I love working in it. Maybe there is a weird parallel, like jazz music, you got improvisation. People are doing their own tunes. Sure, world sure. music. And then classical the people that play classical music are adopting, you know, someone else's music. Sure. And then saying it's mine. Sure, you know what I mean? Sure, I'm yeah. interpreting. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, mate? Just yeah, chill out. that's true. Whereas that's Bach true. and all the classical musicians like Bach, Vivaldi, uh, Mozart, Rachmaninoff, Liszt, uh, Chopin, they all played their own music. Sure. You know what I mean? They so, were performers so as well. Would, so would you just go on the record, Joe, as yeah. saying yeah. in summary to this point, yeah. Today, majority of today's jazz musicians are essentially tribute acts. No, 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 no. I'm no. saying, no, no, ja you have understood me wrong. Jazz musicians are musicians of that. No, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Not uh, jazz. Classical. Classical, classical. Well, no, I'm not saying tribute acts, but if you have that attitude, you re it really doesn't correspond with what you're doing. You know what I mean? I could see that attitude if you're like, this is my music. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's if you like, were Mozart. Yeah, it's, it's, a, weird, were it's a weird thing. Chopin. I'm going to get into trouble, but it is a weird medium. I think about it. You dedicate your life and your discipline to someone else's music. Yeah, Do you know what sure, I mean? So you have sure. to find stuff that... So they're, they're an audience as well. They've got to find something that resonates with them mm. first. And this oh, this music, Chopin is me. He gets me. And then I play it. Whereas if you're a composer, performer, you know, you're already... You know, you're pushing the stuff out sure. of what you want to give people. And then you find the audience that resonates with you. Sure. So I think it's uh, it's interesting in, in genres that aren't improvised. I, I guess like a lot of um like people like... John Williams and people like yeah. that are creating these sort of cinematic landscapes yeah. in their work. Like I guess they're the the classical composers of our day mm. to, to, yeah. uh, in terms of popular. Because I'm talking about popular. Because yeah. in the day Mozart was popular, yeah. Beethoven was popular, yeah. and the popular musicians today are yeah. a lot of people that score film. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean that's the thing. That's what we're we're accustomed to. It's the it's the populace, isn't it? It's the pop music of, of the classical world. But he's great. He's great. He has those themes. I mean, there's nothing that <clears throat> exists in the music that isn't uh, no, classical. You know, he has thematic material, he has development, mm -hmm. uh, things that exist with classical composition. So they're just strong, very good themes. And of course, they adjust to film and, you know, we associate them. It, it's very iconic. Yeah. We associate them with our childhood sure, and all that sort of sure. stuff. So. Uh, look, I'm not uh, dissing. I love classical music and yeah. I love the classical world, but I'm just dissing the people that have that attitude when sure. they're playing it. Because you have to be a servant to your music. Sure. Uh, you have to be always a student and coming up on that thing. Mm. If that gets taken away from you, that all you have is that attitude and that doesn't pass if you don't have the skill. Sure, sure. But in terms of classical, uh, well, symphony mm. um, sound, the album that you did at the Opera House for the mm. Sydney Symphony, oh, that, like, listening to that, I just thought, this is, like, this is great score music. Mm. 
you know, it was beyond being great music. Just listen to that, like you can picture, yeah. you, you know, a scenic landscape with, well, that, that's good. with I think, a lot of it. I think music is all uh, cinematic, the best music anyway. It's mm. any music that can take you away to images, I think that's the thing. Because we all drift off, don't we? You know, when some sort of music is nostalgic. Oh, I remember when I was a child. Oh, I remember I was grabbing an ice cream or something. You know, music will be associated with images. So any any classical music or any music that is a soundtrack to your life or to mm. your to images that they conjure up, I think that's the best type. I mean, it's not just sitting there and you know seeing what it is and analysing what the trumpets are doing. And you know, it's mm. not about analysis. It's about letting yourself go and then you know living a dream. It's like reading a book, seeing the images when you read sure, a book. You know sure. what I mean? The best books will take you away to faraway places sure. um, and, and it, it trigger your imagination. I think music does the same thing. And I think that's what we need to identify. That's what we see in great music. Mm. It makes me cry because it reminds me of this. And sometimes it just resonates and, and overwhelms you. Mm -hmm. But with your music specifically too, I think the listener has to invest themselves in what they're, in what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. You know, like any, any great art that you go and see, it involves uh, the person to make an effort to involve themselves mm. in it, as opposed to, you know, I love pop music, mm. so, well, classic pop music, mm. but there's, you know, it, it, it's, more, it's delivered, you, you kind of force fed it more so than, you know, classical music mm. or instrumental music where it takes an investment, which yeah. then the, what you get back from it though is tenfold yeah. because you're, you're giving <clears throat> yourself with, with, with but also some things can just move you. Some people, that you know, they kind of like, they have these, they're not, uh, like, like the other day I played, um, I played in Adelaide mm. and there was a very, very old woman and she came and bought a lot of CDs, like very old, I'm talking 90s. Mm. And I'm thinking, wow, this music resonated. It was just oud and percussion, me and Jane. Mm. She loved it. Yeah. Australian woman, you know, I just really love this. Yeah, yeah. Know, but she loved it, you yeah, know, yeah. she really, and then went and bought a whole bunch of CDs and, Great. you know, and I thought, Wow, that's amazing that that would resonate with some. It really overwhelmed me. Actually, it was that moment where I thought, wow, what a great audience. This audience just gets in. Guys with cowboy hats also again. Yeah. You know, the real Aussie guys. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. You know, just buying CDs going, yeah, I'll put it on. You know, it's like. But, that you, that was, you, but you've been connecting with the Australian audience for years. Really. Well, it's good like, to see it finally come through. Like, but, I, mean, but I remember when we, we were on the road, when we were yeah. on tour together with Akma. Yeah. And, you, and you would get it. And that, they're not a classical trained audience, yeah. or they're not there for the music. Yeah. And you're still connected with them. It yeah. was still a. You, you know, they, they, were, they were blown away, yeah. you know? Well, I mean, so, yeah, yeah, look, you, you find your ways of doing things. And I think, again, playing a Middle Eastern instrument, I was always scared to do it. When I was at school and starting to learn, I was like, oh, this is, this is ethnic crap, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, they're going to hate but you, this. But you had grown up, though, listening to it, so it was within you, right? I know, like, but, it wasn't, but I was also very aware that these people may not like it, you know what I mean? Mm. It's, not a, it's not a common instrument, it's not uh, something that they're brought up with. But, you know, people, at, at some point I made a change. I thought, you know what, this is all right. No matter what I play... It's actually all right. You know, people, there's something that resonates with them. They will people. go with it. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the confidence that kind of just came with. I thought, you know what, I'm doing it. Not force feeding it down the thing, but also with the humour. I think that's how I develop my humour sure. as a way of also saying, hey, I'm one of you guys. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do that joke. I do a lot of those jokes of, you know, you know, I'm an Australian wood player and uh, you know, none of these foreign wood players come in here taking our Aussie wood playing jobs. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, which is kind of weird when I always think about it because it's kind of that Aussie attitude, you know what I mean? You've got that real country town. Like, oh, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then... <laughs> It's the like, contrast, but that's yeah. what makes it work, and makes yeah. it, and, and also makes it more accessible too. Because yeah. if you are, are getting up there pontificating, yeah. then it would, you know, yeah. create that divide between me and them, as opposed I, to I was us. Thinking, I was thinking there, there'll be a new audience there. Some will just like the banter, some will just like the music, some will sure. like both, yeah, yeah, some will like sure. none of it. Sure. So <laughs> I'll just put it out there, and it's just a stream of consciousness, really. And it's uh, look, sometimes, as I said, if I don't have a timer. It just gets just on and on. Just keeps on going, yeah. Keeps on going. <laughs> How do you find that humour translating in London? Because you're based in London now. Yeah, it's fine. It's, I, I, it's some of the jokes I have to watch out for. It's not, you know, <laughs> London's not... It's, it's, Australia's still Australia, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. We've come so far, but we're not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You yeah, know, yeah. People, you could... We could walk into a bar here and someone go, I haven't got a bomb on you. Go, no, yeah. not today. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And you move on with your life. You know, yeah. the casual <laughs> races. And then people are trying to make me upset. You know, yeah. somebody um, mispronounced my name the other day and somebody goes, you know, that's a microaggression. <laughs> I'm like, 
<laughs> what, what, <laughs> a microaggression. What, you said that to them? No, or? that's what they said. Oh, right, said, right. No, that's a microaggression. Right, right. Like, no, somebody yeah. told me. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. A, a third party trying to, trying to, trying to, nick, trying to make me upset. I was like, well, yeah. mate, I don't have time for yeah. microaggressions. <laughs> I've got time I got for macro. <laughs> mate, yeah, give me a macro any time of the day. I can identify those. But I don't want to go and be upset about yeah. stuff that like you know because Australia does give you a thick skin sure you know what sure. I mean especially the generation we were brought up in yeah I mean I think we were so, the end yeah. of it you know what I mean yeah of, uh, well you know we were still at school and we could still get caned you know oh really you could I, I you, didn't that. you didn't no. you no no, no I never got caned no, yeah, no, no caning have you got a cane yeah sure what are you talking what are you talking about, than about? Than they were in the 90s you could still get caned no 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 there was the mid 90s they were still caning I went to Redfern Public so maybe if he caned then we would just jump him he didn't want to take the kids would just take him down wouldn't want to take the risk one kid got caned once we lost three teachers you know what I mean and that was Redfern was like you know it was a tough upper but I loved it in the 90s, sure. The Redfern was a sort of like, you know, if you were wearing a pair of Jordans in Redfern, you weren't coming home with them. Oh, okay, well, that's good. You know, yeah, what do you mean? Is that, that's good. You know that that's what it was like. Well, I had the pair of Jordans. <laughs> so the way I could afford them. <laughs> the I afford them. <laughs> you know, in Egypt, there's this guy that walks around with, um, you know, like... Uh, bits of the old uh, tin and old metal bits and pans and stuff and you can swap him and, and you know it's yeah. called Rubabekia but in Redfern it was like the guys with all the stolen gear yeah. you know, Jordans <laughs> and VHS yeah, VH, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what would you like I remember honestly how many, how many times we got offered like the, uh, the the VHS player yeah oh my god they were like high property yeah yeah things, you know but so, I, I always remember Redfern Station, you know, whenever you stopped, at, you, you had to, you know, look over your shoulder and beware. I, as a kid, I saw something in Redfern Station that scared the hell. You know when you see something that really scares you? Mm. And it was a guy opening up his wallet at the window, the ticket office, and this kid just came, grabbed that and ran. Ran, all right, all right. That's it, what do you do? Yeah, yeah, you that, that's, that's And that was, was got to be early 90s, you know what wow, I mean? That yeah, was, yeah. You know, but now that happens in London, like the phone snatching. I nearly had my oh, phone snatched. Oh, really? You'd be looking down, and then all of a sudden a hand will come. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's he dropped quick. it. Wow. Came on with a motorcycle and just... Pew, you gotta be careful. I, th- I thought of an invention of a fake hand. <laughs> just so I can go this one. <laughs> or just, 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 just have a really crap phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> just a fake. <laughs> Takes your arm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Took his arm. But it's just, and I find that was some of the worst crime. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a really bad crime. You know what I mean? Some people do things off the cuff, but that's like your fellow human being. Yeah, that Don't is. Don't do that. You know my, they have information. My, you have so much on your phone. My Don't dad do had it in in Double Bay. This was no. years ago. He was walking along and he. He had like a man pouch and he had his phone in it. Mm. He had his um, he had his um, checkbook in it and his file of facts. And right. I was with Jamoan at the time when my dad yeah. called me and, to- and and it happened. And I went, what happened? Because this guy just stole, you know, and he ran up and there was a car waiting up ahead and they jumped in that and yeah, took and off. It. And that was Double Bay. And that's I remember, t- and Jamoan's like, well, what just happened? I said, oh, they, they got my dad's, um, all my dad's stuff. They got his mobile phone, mm. his checkbook and his file of facts. And he goes, Filofax, checkbook. Yeah. What do they get? His pager too? <laughs> <laughs> got his pager. <laughs> yeah, just anything. I, I can't remember. His yellow pages was in there. You know? I mean, but, that's but a, yeah. But, but what year was that? I mean, it must have been a very heavy phone as well. No, no, this, no this was, oh, I don't know, over a decade ago. Yeah. Well over a decade ago. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't like that snatching thing, man. It's just no, terrible. You no. know what I mean? Homicide. Yeah, you're fine. Ho- homicide, yeah, you're, you're fine, fine with. No, something might have yeah. happened, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, but something that, instigated yeah, that, but, but with a, just snatching saying, a phone. The phone, it's got everything. They know how important Do you back phone your phone is. up? Do you have a backup? Uh, I, I, I've recently done it. Yeah, like, I've, been, do, I've been on the uh, on the edge for a I know, while. I've got to do it with mine. I haven't backed mine yeah. up in years. Yeah, yeah I've just bought, you just have to buy it, mate. You know, And the thing is, the phones are getting, you know, I need a lot of capacity now. Everyone takes four million photos, and I do videos and all that sort of stuff. And if you're doing socials, you have to take so much stuff. And Sure. But that's what I do on long flights now. It's just to clear out. <laughs> just oh, yeah, from, just go, go from the clear. beginning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's just, you know, you end up... Uh, by the time you pass away, you'll probably be, uh, you know, you'll have um, four million photos on but your the, phone. It's but just that's terrible. That's what the crazy thing is, though. Like, you know, remember in the back in the day when you would take a photo, you would actually think about and yeah. compose the shot and you would, <laughs> you know, you, you, you would take time with the shot. Now does it click, oh, yeah, done, and, and probably not even look at it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just triggered a memory of my my dad. Fat Cat came here. There's, there's a place here, um, Maryville Metro. <clears throat> Back in the day, whoever knows Maryville Metro, it's still going. It's like a little shopping centre. It's great. No one ever goes there, but you know, 
24 hour Kmart or something like that anyway yeah. <laughs> not plugging Kmart but if you're watching <laughs> <laughs> anyway so they said Kmart was there Kmart uh, uh, Fat Kmart. Cat's at Kmart, Kmart. <laughs> Fat Cat is at is at Maryville Metro so right we went and we were all excited, just the three of us, my brother John, my brother George, and I was the youngest. We'd come from Egypt and we just moved around the corner. And um, So Fat Cat came, we saw him on TV, and then we took a photo with Fat Cat, developed the photo. And? And my dad had just focused on me, so all the heads of my brothers. Just the torso of Fat <laughs> just Cat. The torso. <laughs> just me, just me, and this much ground. So, so yeah. it's one of the funniest photos. It's just we never got anything with Cat, but it showed how much I was like prized, you know. Yeah, that's you know? great. That's, that's yeah. Your dad doesn't give a shit about the cat. <laughs> we just didn't know, you know to just, use the camera. Yeah, yeah. He's got that much ground down the bottom. He could have just lifted it a bit. But anyway, at least with mobile phones now, you have all sorts of options. You can take professional photos and yeah. all that sort of stuff yeah but in, t- in terms of you know growing up in, in Redfern mm. you, you know how did you how were you do you find that it gave you kind of street smart in terms of later in life because I you, mean, you, you, you had to you know you had to be wary you had to have your no it didn't give me street smart but it gave me um, like just smart no it just gave me it gave me stuff in general like I mean that I appreciate now you know what I mean because Redfern Public for instance was uh, um, you know highly indigenous high, and then there was a lot of immigrants mm-hmm. um, and so there was a very interesting uh, you know demographic low social economic um, you know demographic and it was interesting how we all kind of got together and played rugby and rugby league mm-hmm. you know South Sydney was a big thing we'd go after school we'd just go we'd just go hang out with the with the players they had the stadium Watch open. Train. Yeah, they were yeah. training. You know, we used to drink their Gatorade. They used to have these like things of Gatorade. You just go fill up. No one ever said anything. And I think that was the great thing about the community. Yes. There was that, come on, just let the kids play and have a good time. Reggie Rabbit was there. We were saying he was a bit cranky, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> poor God, bless his soul. Drank all his Gatorade. Bless his soul. Yeah. Oh, mate. It was, it was great memories. And I remember hanging out with players. They'd sign things for you. and um, So it was great. Hanging out in South Sydney uh, with the South Sydney players, even though I was a Bulldog supporter. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it yeah was you a got great free vibe. Gatorade, so but yeah, it, of course you're going to hang you, out. You learn so much about the community, and also, but, you know, like now we're, you know, there's a lot of acknowledgement to country and things like that. But, you know, back then they were doing that, and, uh, you know, you, you, you knew more about the indigenous uh, issues, um, which, you know, a lot of people growing up in all sorts of other schools hadn't, you know, didn't encounter that. Right. You know, we cooked oval. And we cooked oval. We cooked kangaroo on the oval. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I did yeah. an album called History as a Heartbeat, and that was all based around Redfern. I had the Redfern speech right. uh, with Paul Keating because we went as a um, as a school excursion. Yeah. And I got to meet Paul Keating. Well, you sat on Paul Keating's lap. S- sat on Paul it was Keating's like, lap. I'm meeting Santa, the I'm, Prime I'm Minister. I'm going to try and find you know? the signature. I'm sure it's upstairs. He yeah. signed it. Uh, I Is got there a it photo on. of you sitting on his lap? You know what? I've been trying to find it. Yeah. And you know what? It was a guy called Mr. Viney in Redfern, a guy called Viney, bless his soul, he passed away this year. Um, primary school, he said, Joe, you're going to be in the paper tomorrow, son. And I was so excited, I went and bought the paper, nothing. Oh. You know, a little kid looking yeah, through yeah, the paper? Yeah. Nothing. So I'm still looking for it because I like to tell the story, you know, yeah. and then I want to go to Paul Keating and recreate the photo or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting on. Before just, and after. On, yeah, just get on the scales <laughs> for me, son. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> but that was amazing, amazing time. Sure. You know, imagine witnessing history mm. um, and going there and, um, you know, it was a very significant, iconic speech and we're yeah. a part of it. But I think you make a good point too when you say community, having mm. that sense of community yeah. there. Like back during those times, I think in those sort of inner city suburbs, there was a stronger sense of community. Mm. Like even where I grew up in Balmain, which has mm. changed a lot since then, mm. but there were wharfies, um, working class mm. pe- people, you know, it was, uh, you know, and it was rough too. Mm. And there was a stronger sense of community. But now with mm. these areas being gentrified, same yeah. with Redfern, that's been yeah. very gentrified. Yeah, I mean, know, Redfern so. still has its pocket, you yeah, know, yeah. Of, of, you know, and I see a lot of, um, you know, former uh, peers there and stuff. So it's good. Redfern, yeah, I mean, the, the sense of community, I think anywhere where there's a community people like, you know, you mm. like to know, you know, it's like Cheers, you want to know where everyone knows your name, you know, sure. everybody knows <laughs> your name, you know, it's, it's, it makes it more personable, yay, this, blah, 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 so, um, yeah, growing up in those areas and at that school, uh, it just showed you how to adapt and also, again, having that attitude uh, of trying to excel mm. in such an environment is interesting mm. because, you know, I remember even at school, they said, do you know your times tables? No. And then I went home and I'm like, oh, they asked me to if I knew my times table. They said, no. I said, how, how do you not know your times tables? I think I learned them in a night. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, they go, what are you sure. talking about? You don't know your times tables. The parents Bam, got onto it. Bam, straight into it. Yeah, yeah got yeah. into it. What do you mean you don't know? And so yeah. it wasn't, 
Um, but then uh, at Redfern, you see, you did your Redfern primary school and then you had the option, if you wanted to continue a life of crime, you could, <laughs> you could go to, I think it was Cleveland Boys High School or right. something like that down the road. Right. Or there was a school bus which took you to Randwick Boys. Right. And so Randwick Boys, um, we decided that option. <clears throat> and so we went to high school and I was an idiot. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't understand anything. Mm. I went from that primary school. Because that primary school was almost like babysitting. Yeah. We weren't learning anything in depth. Sure, You know what sure. I mean? Because also there was a lot of trouble and there was a lot of... Sure. You know, uh, you know, a lot of issues. So mm -hmm. it was just almost like babysitting. Little things, well, of course. But, we... but then you ended up becoming school captain. Yeah, school captain at Redfern and then Randwick. But yeah, that's yeah. because we always pushed at it, you know what I mean? But you have right. a, a family at home that go, go, yeah. do it. You know but it's what I mean? great to have that upbringing too of parents that push you, that like, mm -hmm. no, you, you got to do this. You know? I think so. I, I think when you live with a dictator, I think, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the Egyptian head. That's the Egyptian patriarchy. You know yeah. what I mean? The head of the household just give you your mental issues and your generational trauma. But yeah. while he's passing that on, he yes. instills in you success. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, and then you have it. And then, you and then you have your outlet through music. Yeah, I mean, you know? that's the thing. I think that's, uh, look, it, 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 that kind of dictatorship at home is a tough one. I like it, to be honest. Like, I, now that I've, you know, seen the upbringing now, you know, you have mm. people coming over, so people come over to my house with their kids, they find something, they just start breaking it or hitting it against the wall. Parents like, they're zen. <laughs> yeah, you know, no. like, my dad, he'd give us a look yeah. and he would Especially just... Especially in like someone an, else's home. Oh, yeah. it was like an arrow. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, yeah. Like, <laughs> you'd be silent for the next two weeks. Yeah. And maybe my brother next to me got a little bit of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just got a little bit of the gaze. Yeah, You know, sure. it's, it's just, you got to, you know, it was that kind of upbringing. It was a tight household the tight mm. regime mm, mm. and kept us all under order and mm. I think that's it I, I know there's some people that rebel against that but I sure. think we <laughs> I think but look was, but it's interesting that you said looking back on that that yeah. you were appreciated I like that you I like that upbringing. not that I you know if I ever had kids if I'd bring them up in that manner who knows yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. it's probably illegal to bring them up in that manner now <laughs> nowadays yeah, they, have yeah, laws. Yeah. <laughs> they have laws in place yeah, yeah. the hand of discipline <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's that healing hand again <laughs> all sorts of things oh. yeah and speaking of that, do you do you want to have kids one day? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think that's another chapter. I mean, people make that decision if they don't want to have kids, but you know, mm. what's, what's more of the same? You know, mm. you're gonna play gigs. You know, be nice to. And I think I, you know, I think it's just so I don't, you know, die alone. Really, mm. you know, hopefully there's someone by the bedside. It's that killer speech at the end. Yeah, I yeah. just want to do that killer speech. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take care of you, my love. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something to say. There's treasure under. <laughs> <You know. laughs> no, I, look, I, th I think it's just another chapter. I don't know. It's uh, it's a big responsibility, and sure, that's something sure. you can't take lightly. But you don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it comes about. Sure. Then maybe it's. Uh, but it's hard for you know when you're on the road a lot too. Yeah. You know, you know, to be a parent or even relationships. Yeah. You know, it takes. You, you need to meet the right. The right, the right person, person to yeah, I mean, make that's, that work. <laughs> that's that's always the challenge. You know yeah. what I mean. You have to. Um, see, um, yeah, somebody that really understands the lifestyle and mm. then, you know, see if that's appropriate and then you want to bring in other humans into that and of course, then his upbringing, you know mm, what I mean? Mm. You don't want to launch two other, you know, nutcases into the, into the sphere, <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, sure. that, that, that kid's a part of you, you know what yeah. I mean? It's not willy-nilly, it's, it's not a willy-nilly. It's got to represent. But I do like the idea, again, it's community, it's, you know, sure. if I had the money, I'd just, you know, it'd be a big family, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, sure. Big sure. house, big family and I think sure. the Middle Eastern uh, people prize that mm. sense of family and community. Yes. So. How, how do you find in London? Have you formed a sense of community yeah. over there with, you know... Yeah, there's a lot of... The area that I live in, there's a lot of Egyptians and Arabs there. Oh, so great. I walk down the market, right. Shepherd's Bush, Shepherd's Bush Market, yeah. go say hello. It's great. Your favourite. That's your favourite oh. pastime, markets. Going to markets, oh, catching gonna, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. That's <laughs> You're it. in your you element. Know? Well, I'm, I'm free during the day. This is the, yeah. the whole problem. You know what I mean? I'm, most of the time I'm looking for friends to have coffee with during the day. Sure, At night, sure. you know, you have work and you do things. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, it's just like, who else is available during the day? So you go down to the market, you have a coffee, you have your routine and... Um, yeah, so you you work in very intensive moments, but then sometimes you get this uh, space, which is good, so you can create. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, speaking of London, mm. that links us to, or England, yeah. that links us to your favourite album that you've yeah, picked. Because yeah. what we do on this podcast, as I'm sure you know, uh, I invite you to share your favourite album, film and book. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with your favourite album now. That, yeah. Some people, I think, would think, oh, yeah, something yeah. of an eclectic, like, within the Middle East and, or classical. Yeah. But you've gone with a classic here mm. that does actually involve some Middle Eastern sound. Yeah, well, that's what... And it's none other than Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, No Quarter. Yeah. 
Uh, look, I, this album is so... This is one that changed my life. Mm. It changed my life, this album. I'll tell you why, because um, there's some tracks here. It's particularly Four Sticks, which I love. Mm-hmm. Um, and this collaboration here, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant, of course, of Led Zeppelin fame, uh, they teamed up with uh, Egyptian musicians. I mm. didn't know. I didn't know that you could, you know, collaborate with that. And I was learning the Ud. And then they had these images of violinists and, and mm. nay and uh, the, the Arabic flute and, you know. So and what's the, the instrument that you crank that gets... That's the, a hurdy-gurdy, but that's, that's not Middle Eastern. Right, right. But that's also in the collaboration. Right. So... Um, yeah, on, on Gallo's pole, they crank that thing out. Uh, yeah, that's... The, a, you saw the video clip, did you? <laughs> no, 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 well, no, I remember hearing it go, what was that? And then yeah, years later seeing the... But this was back in like nineties. Yeah, ninety four, I think yeah. it was. It was a live. It, it was live. It was done. I, my brother. So, I should say, my brother John had bought the uh, the VHS. Yes. So that's how I saw it. It wasn't yes. that I saw it on uh, that I bought it as a record or a CD right, first. Right. It was actually a recording. I think in ninety four, and there was the London uh, Philharmonic or something like that. Some orchestra, some London big London orchestra with the Egyptian. Uh, musicians and funnily enough years later I met <clears throat> or one of my best mates now in London is the son of one of the violinists that took part in oh, that project really? yeah yeah so he has a, a, a lovely record at home platinum uh, it went platinum Fantastic. Um, so it was uh, yeah it was a big recording and, and just I just love the arrangements and the collaboration mm. and since then I thought you know what you can collaborate with Western stuff. I was you know going to say I mean? did that yeah did that inspire it was 94, you I don't know <clears throat> how old I'd be in 94 but maybe 11 you know or 12 something yeah. like that and you know, I'm watching this going, wow, this is inspiration. This is where you can take yeah, it. I yeah, I mean, and it was just, yeah, it was a beautiful project and done very well. I think in part of the collaboration, you know, when you collaborate with other cultures, you can do it badly as well. You know, you can push cliche and stuff right, like that. But this right. one was really good. And, <clears throat> mm. um, you know, Robert Plant was singing beautifully mm. on it, man. He's what a singer. And, and, and vocally, <clears throat> too, he was um, channeling some of the great um, like Middle Eastern sounds, yeah, vocal was, sounds. Yeah, it just it just worked, man, and I, I love the. If you haven't heard it, it's the you know four sticks, and you can hear a Middle Eastern version of uh, Kashmir as well. Yeah, Kashmir, which is good, the big one. Yeah, and, and I always one of my favorite songs was always uh, the way it is, um, and uh, hearing that on the version on here, it's just it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, look, that's that for me is as I said, iconic. Taught me a lot, and I think launched me into so another that's way. That's the way. That's the way. Sorry, I was just thinking that. that, that, that <clears> that's the way. Yeah. Um, That's the way it's going to be, <laughs> Mama said. <laughs> sorry, go on. No, no, sorry, we should do a collaboration. Oh, that was lovely. That was pleasant. No, no just, I'm just saying it's, it's something that kind of changed my way of thinking in terms of music and collaboration and fusion. In saying that, have you ever thought of collaborating with a vocalist or someone like a Robert Plant or someone, you yeah, know? Yeah, I'd love to do something like, like Sting that. Sting or, you know. Oh, so. I mean, I'd love to play with Sting. I mean, yeah. that would be great. I mean, I could see he would get it because he's got such an eclectic taste. And his songs are beautiful, man. Oh, I saw him last year. Yeah. And he, he, phenomenal. Yeah. His voice is still... And man, for a guy in his 70s... Yeah. Unbelievable. He's yeah. got the guns. He's still yeah, well, in what, great <laughs> shape. He looks like he did 30, 20 years ago. Yeah, well, that's what they do. Uh, they just work out and they, you know, they, they're on something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm withering away. Mobility scooter. <laughs> you gotta revolving get the, stage. You've got to get the Springsteen no, workout no, regime revolving happening. Stage. No, no, I'll get back to it. Look, I'm, I'm going to hopefully we'll do another one of these in a couple of years. <laughs> and then I'll be back in, back in form. Or it'll be Memorial Podcast. <laughs> 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 just slow yeah. everything down. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a re-release of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slow, slow, slow everything down. Yeah, yeah. Some nice the cloud music. effect. You know, <laughs> some nice sad music behind. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'd like to in memoriam. Yeah. yeah. R.I.P. In curls, font curls. Uh, but yeah, collaborating with someone like that. Like, have you ever thought of reaching out to any of these? Yeah, guys? I, don't, I don't know how to do it. To be honest, I mean, I, I like. Come on, you're in it. London. You're mixing. Didn't you? I don't know. Didn't, what do you didn't, do? Didn't you, sting meet, at sting.com. Didn't, didn't you? Um, didn't you meet Jimmy Page? No. No, didn't who no. did you meet? You met someone over in London that was. <laughs> I don't remember. Was it one of those guys? Uh, uh, Mick Jagger. You, you met, that oh, was in India. Oh, did you meet Mick Jagger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in, he came to a gig. Oh. I had this big dream he'd invite me to, um, you know, to be on like a support act. Or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing. No. <laughs> I gave him Chameleons of the White him. Shadow. Oh, nice. That was yeah. a good, that's a that good album. A, I, I start to think maybe that was a hallucination. <laughs> I was playing in India. Yeah. I knew the Maharaja of Jodhpur. <laughs> <laughs> and he was sitting in the front row next to Mick. Right. And I went up to the Maharaja of Jodhpur and I said, do you reckon you can give this CD to Mick? And he yeah. said, I'll introduce you. Yeah. So I was introduced to Mick Jagger by, right. by the Maharaja of Great. Jodhpur. And how was he? Great guy, man. Yeah. Great guy. Hung out a little bit. Did a little bit of a dance. Because you know, he was just attending the festival. He was just a right. guest at the festival. Right. 
it was nice. And uh, Lorenz Scott at the time, he was going out with, uh, right. you know, may her soul rest in peace, mm. you know. Mm. He was going out. She was very lovely. She took a nice photo of us. And, you know, it was, yeah. it was good hanging out with me. And he knew about Ud players. Right. He was talking to me about Ud players in the 70s. So right. these guys had an open mind. Oh, yeah, listening. yeah, sure. Especially yeah. from that generation, too. Yeah. They were very, like, you know, you look, you look with um, George Harrison and, mm. uh, and uh, Sitar, Sitar. And, yeah. you, you know, they, they, they were open to... Yeah, other sounds. And, and, you know, that's, again, you know, the open mind and the, you know, wanting to push uh, new things and... Yeah, uh, look, and they've they've created a kind of legendary status, iconic mm, mm, uh, status. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, Sting, I reckon, because I'd reckon love to. Sting, we'll get in touch Sting... with him. You saw him last year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's Sting doing gigs with Billy Joel at the moment. Mm -hmm. They're doing a double bill in the like stadiums in the yeah, states. I mean, that's that's the way, that's what you want in that's the what end. You want. I don't think I do. See, my music is too. It takes its toll on the body. That's why I need to get in shape. So mm, I think, you know, mm. if I was singing a song, it would be great, you know, but, you know, I'm shredding <laughs> yeah. most but of the time. But do you find that it's like you're, you're spent by the end of a gig? Uh, emotionally spent. Right, Emotionally right. Because it's actually a big effort. Like, doing the jokes mm. actually is a big effort, as you would know. Yeah, yeah. And also playing music. Mm. It's just the level of concentration. But, um, but what about physically? Because, like, I'm, oh, like yeah. I'm watching you side a stage some nights mm. when we're on tour together and... I'm looking at you going, man, there's a, you know, there's a lot of effort that's going into yeah. this and you're sweating really yeah. into it. It's like, it's, it's not like, it's not a cakewalk. Yeah, I look, uh, it's, uh, it, I, I don't know how, I don't know where I get the energy from, but sometimes I'm really hurting, but I get through it. You have to. Well, yeah, you like, like anyone on yeah, stage. You yeah, you, your you, body has that, to. That goes through. out the back and yeah. then you walk off saying like, Ugh. Yeah, you find different ways of doing things. But I just did a 25 hour gig in London. 25 hours. Yeah, yeah, I did a fundraiser. I did. Uh, I, I, I sat down. You, you played for 25 I played hours? 25 hours straight, went to the bathroom once at 17 hours. Now, how much of that was um, talking with the What's audience? That? No, Stand zero up. talking. Or was it all music? Zero talk. King's College Chapel. I wanted to create a beautiful environment. What do you called, mean? Called it the 24 hour prayer for humanity. Wow. Yeah, it was and a world record attempt as well. Now, did you, um, so did, did you just do your whole back catalogue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just anything I wanted to play, really. I just, yeah, did all my my um yeah all pretty much all the tunes wow you know and it, it, but it also relaxed me i didn't i didn't go in with a uh, with a particular plan but for some reason i didn't hurt at all like mm, i had to stretch mm, now and then mm. the only thing is i had to go to the bathroom like at first, it started at 11 a.m on the 18th of december yeah. and at 4 a.m i went for the first toilet break wow and last toilet break now what what about the audience Did you, they were coming amazing, going, coming right? in now so lighting it was, candles it was a beautiful environment man. honestly there was something really spiritual well, they, about you it. had some spiritual connection yeah. there you had you know yeah, it's, and the fact they were coming in it's just like well i can't take a break that's why i didn't take a break mm. they were like coming in and out i'm like mm. nah. so i the that 4 a.m slot there wasn't very many people. Did you record any of this? Yeah, yeah. You can oh, actually yeah. watch the whole thing. Live stream. It's 24 hours. It's 24 it hours, but it's in eight hour batches because uh, oh, you know, yeah. Facebook doesn't allow yeah. you to film more than that. <laughs> you know, I'd love a nice... Part 24. one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can watch the whole yeah. the whole thing. 25 hours of That's nonstop. That's great. Good action. Now, you release an hour... You, well, not an hour. An album a yeah. year, basically, yeah. right? Because, what, it's 20 albums now, Yeah, right? about 20 albums. Now, what is it... That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. Though, that, that drive to... Yeah. Do it, like, what is that? Uh, it's addiction, probably. Yeah, like, no, it's, no it's, it's challenging yourself every year. I think every musician should be able to produce, um, you know, an hour of music. Well, it's usually 80 minutes. I pack them that's on. That's a lot. Come on, man. What? That's a lot to, yeah, to, but that's to, good. Uh, to compose an hour of music a year. Yeah. That's, you know, that's a big... Yeah, but uh, no, I think I think you should be able to if you're a composer, anyway. And there's also and is that the norm? Do you find do other people do that? No, 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 no one's All as right. stupid as me. It's not even <laughs> lucrative to do it. Like I mean, but by well, the time especially people, nowadays too with the whole streaming. You, you, and yeah, stuff. but like, last year, for instance, it was an hour improvisation. It was my twentieth album. I wanted to do an hour. You know, of what your last album? Yeah, that was improvised. That was just improvised. My, the, really? To those who came before us, yeah, I just wanted that opening uh, track is fantastic yeah. on that. The, uh, uh, like, I was very moved yeah. by that. Oh, well, there you go. No, it, but that's it actually was... just one piece. I know it's split up into twenty, but if you look at the back, uh, it actually reads as a poem. It's one piece, but hmm. I've just split them up because you know people can't listen to it. You know, you put on the CD, go, "Well, where's that section?" Yeah, you yeah, know? sure. So it was just more for. But just yeah, that, it was very. Um, yeah, I, I, for me, I just mm. had this barren landscape, mm. you know, for that first track. Mm. That's what was, that was, it was that sense of... Thanks, Joel. Yeah. It was, Thanks, mate. No, no, it was great. Well, the man. idea was just to let myself go free and then also create a work, improvised work, which just had a bit of shape, you know, because Arabic music has takasim, which is the improvised, uh, an improvised form or genre. And uh, so I thought, you know, it's usually 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. For my 20th, I want to do an hour. 
So that was the idea. So I did right. exactly an hour. Wow. And it was just, yeah, I did two takes at the studio and the second one was the best one. The first mm. one was a bit too rigorous and the right. other one I had relaxed and got tired. Yeah, no, I felt that in tired. that album. It mm. mm. flowed. Yeah, it had, a good, you know? it had a good flow. And it's just challenging yourself and then, you know, picking off themes and, you know, you start a theme and then, yeah, you know, there's a way of doing it. Yeah. And again, challenging yourself and then what you channel, channel as well mm. and hence to those who came before us it's just basically everyone you've met and everyone that's coming to your life or anything you've read or anything you've seen uh, kind of just makes you and then you push that forward and um, it's good to recognize that too and i think that i hope so <laughs> but, but i i do i i feel that you know there's not enough um appreciation for those who have come before yeah. you know especially in today's generation that's so quick moving well, you, you know i i feel that you know that's where the gold comes from. Well, you know? there's a lot of um, step skipping in this day and age. Mm. You know what I mean? There's certain ways of of reaching a goal and people take a shortcut and sometimes, you know, that's... that's. But anyway, whatever works for people is fine. You know, it's not mm. for us to judge. But personally, um, I have a big appreciation to, you know, the people that influence you and the people that bring forward to the music. And again, um, it's that... Coming back to that attitude we spoke about earlier, when you're cocky and when you're, you know, like not appreciate oh, this is my music and all this sort of mm. stuff uh it can be taken away from him when it is that's that's just that's embarrassment mm. you know what i mean that's mm. just what what do you have so well, you have to be always always know that it can be taken at any time you know you can injure your hand you can just go slam it into a door or you can yeah, get by sure. a car you know you fall off a bike sure, you know and sure. then your music isn't there anymore and that attitude just doesn't fly with that whereas if you're humble and you go look this is what you know, the path is set and I'm channeling and I, I feel it. And of course you feel it, man. And that's why uh, people resonate with um, the stuff that you do and also the themes at play. You'll notice I don't really talk about geography in my music. I talk about people's emotions and feelings. Yes, and stuff which like is that. universal. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I can write things about a certain geography and of course some of the music does have that, but not all the time. You know, I want to connect with people on a general sense. I want my music to be inclusive. Mm. You know, it's about inclusion. I think the more people you include, the, the more amazing it is. And, mm. um, and I think that's the message behind what I do. Mm. Well, yeah, it's it's working so far. Mate. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. No, but uh, but to, uh, do you do you plan on continue continually doing the album a, a year? Yeah, I yeah. think it's good. I mean, it's four arias in a row now, so I can't. I know, I can't, right? Yeah. Well, I remember like years ago yeah. when you and I would laugh how you, I think at that point you'd had nine nominations, yeah, like, yeah. and like every year you're going along, it's like, yeah, well, I'm not yeah. going to win it this year. But then, yeah. you, then, then I had the, a stretch. Uh, you broke the uh, <laughs> yeah, the floodgates. Know, the floodgates yeah. open, and yeah. and you're up to eight now. Yeah, eight, eight yeah. arias. Yeah, so that's, we'll that's phenomenal. Yeah, man. it's good. It's ma it's amazing, man. It's it's really great um, to be receiving that type of recognition. Yeah. But also, you uh, know, technically, you got yeah. nine. Though. Oh yeah, technically I have nine. <laughs> yeah, well, they send you more than one anyway. But but yeah, they remember did, that they, year yeah, they yeah, sent they, you. That was the first one I got. They put my spelt my name wrong. Yeah, yeah. Just put my name wrong. I mean, uh, toward where, like who's looking at that? <laughs> like who's the, the engraver? There's somebody sent him the, the wrong name. Yeah. I mean, it's just like not something you make a mistake. And, and, on. and, and did you have a microaggression? What's that? <laughs> That's a macroaggression. Macro. You know what I mean? I can identify that. But also, I took that very lightheartedly. I was like, ah, uh, no, yeah. I remember when you did. Yeah, yeah, I, said, name wrong, I remember bro. you saying to me when. That happens. You're like, oh, I'm getting an extra one, so yeah, I'm keeping this yeah, one. Yeah. I ain't giving That's this right. That was the deal. Yeah, that yeah. was the deal. I said, but I want to keep the original. You yeah, know? yeah. It's one of the, like those mule coins, you know, the misprints in, yes. in the yeah, States. Yeah. They're worth a lot. <laughs> you know, we'll see how we go. But yeah, that was a that was a bit weird. Spell your name. You wait ten years to get an award, yeah. and then they spell your name. Well, I just remember like each year that you were nominated, and then I'd call yeah. you up afterward. Did it, Did you get it? And you're like, eh, yeah, not yeah. this year. Yeah, not this year. Got bro. bumped out again. But then, yeah. but then, yeah, you've certainly made up for it. Well, because like, I've always, you know, you, you always think that you've done the best in the album and, you know, you don't know how the judges are going to sure. judge. You know what sure. I mean? But at the end of the day, again, awards don't, you know, fuel you to do anything. You know right. what I mean? Right. I've got enough yeah. now. I've got yeah, enough yeah, 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 arias. Yeah. Yeah. But do I? <laughs> yeah, but, well, you, you, you want to get double digits. Well, who knows? You know, the Wiggles, I think, have seven in a row. They go seven in a row. Yeah, but that's uh, the Wiggles are just another level. They're of, a phenomena. You, you know, come amazing. On, they, sell, they sell out like something like eleven shows at Madison Square Garden. Amazing, you know? but they're also crazy. generally nice people. You know, yeah, I mean? they're yeah. lovely. They're lovely. Well, you have got to be genuinely nice person. Uh, have, you, have, you th have you thought of collaborating with the Wiggles? I'd love to do something with the Wiggles and yeah. Play School. I got asked to do Play School, but I wasn't oh. in the country. Ah. I was really annoyed about that because yeah. you know, I want to go with Big Ted and you know yeah. Jemima and Open all those kind of things. Maybe not that. It's funny. I've been using that. My whole life. <laughs>
the things they instill with you. Well, who came up with those lyrics? Yeah, I mean, yeah. seriously, come on, how did that get through ABC? That's when that's when the ABC weren't looking. Yeah, like, yeah. Open. Yeah. Well, yeah, right, that sounds good, mate. Yeah. when Rolf Harris yeah. was still prominent yeah. in the ABC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. It's, it's terrible. Oh, yeah. terrible. That's got to be. But you everything. can do an instrumental version of that. You know? Oh man, play school and no, but look, I'd like to big red cup, but they, you know they need big fat Arab or something. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy the dinosaur, the yeah. Captain Feather Sword. You know, Dor- you know, big red card, big yeah. fat Arab. That's yeah, what yeah, they need. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I can see that working. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of um, children's films yeah. or children's work. It's not really even a children's no, film, what children's you've picked film. for your favourite film, classic, yeah. none other than Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. Yeah, Willy Wonka, mate, what a movie. What a movie. But also, Willy Wonka is me. Do you understand? Mm. <laughs> I see. I, see, I, I yeah, connect with the that. guy. The guy's a perfectionist. He wants to create such mm. great joy. And, and then you get a bunch of idiots <laughs> in there <laughs> trying to spoil things, right? And not understand your vision. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. It's just all about, it's, it's that thing of like art and then people really not getting it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, sure, you sure. You know, he's created something and it's like, oh yeah, I want this yeah, now and I want that. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, he's, he's misunderstood. Mm. You know, he's not a, a mental guy. Mm. He's just a guy that's really lived for this passion and very passionate dude and you know trying to do his best and also creating joy you know mm, what i mean mm. even though he himself doesn't you know, look very joy he's got a type of melancholy and there, there is a darkness to yeah. him as well like yeah. you see which makes it like the, the character so interesting Gene Wilder, it's so incredible. it's got he's multifaceted that yeah, the, yeah. the dynamics of that character is. yeah but it is that so spot on i do love it that mm. passion and and then also people misinterpreting the 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 art of, mm. of what he's creating and um, you know because you still get that that's that's perfect to what trolling is like online mm. you know what I mean you know mm. I remember you and your bit you go you get a you know uh, they used to do a bit about um, in YouTube you know you oh, know the comment cat, section a cat playing a piano you go, oh yeah it's whatever it's playing wrong notes or whatever you yeah, know yeah. they just miss the whole idea of right. what's happening right and that's that's the thing you know people just say oh that's crap that's junk and it comes from people's insecurities but, and it can it's fine but, but the way they phrase it and the way they but it reflects of... more on them I find those comments have nothing to do with yeah. what's being put out there yeah. I don't think people appreciate to the amount you, you know of exposure that you give like when you release an album you're opening yeah. yourself up there yeah. when I get up there and do jokes you're opening yourself up there when open you open wide come inside <laughs> <laughs> it's play school it's play school it's time to but, yeah. but you're, you're exposing yourself yeah. you know and in a <laughs> in a metaphorical way no no but you are and, and, yeah, and it's so a vulnerability someone, there's so a vulnerability art go, is vulnerable some idiot keyboard warrior to go oh that's yeah. shit it's like yeah. You do something, yeah. man. You put yourself out yeah, there. Yeah, I know, but we're know? not talking about a banana, st- you know, sticky tape to a gallery wall. You know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. art, you know. You know right, or the, right. guy, <laughs> the guy in England, he gave him a black canvas and called the work, uh, take the money and run. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean yeah. great, great concept. Yeah. Like, that, was a, that was a great play years ago. Did you ever see it called Art? No. And I saw it, I, I, when I went to London for the first time, I saw it on the West End and um, Jack D was in it. And then when I went to... Um, New York, like a, a month later, I saw the um, Broadway version of it. And it had, um, what's he, Knight um, from, uh, you know, Newman. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know his name, but yeah, yeah Newman. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's a, just a great play about this artwork that he spends all this money on that's just a white canvas. Yeah. And, the whole, and it's, you know, it's kind of put in the mirror on the art world. Yeah. But it's... Um, yeah, similar yeah, it to is that a bit like concept. that. Look, I mean, some some art is better in concept than it is in in you know in reality. Same as music, sometimes it's better in concept. Oh, Silk Road, let's get a Chinese person and you know some a Chinese musician and an Arab musician together, and then yeah. it sounds terrible. You know, right. it's just like a bunch of mishmash, cliched, whatever. Right. So um, you know, I was I'm not talking about a particular project, by the way. <laughs> People go Silk Road because <laughs> <laughs> there is the Silk Road project. I'm not dissing them. <laughs> just, just, Yo-Yo Ma's in it. Yo-Yo Ma, respect yeah, yeah. Yo-Yo Ma. I love <laughs> Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> anyway, no, I love Yo-Yo Ma. I hope I, I hope I work with him some point. You know, you know Yo-Yo Ma, the cellist. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, incredible. You know what? I saw him. I did. I played the Expo, the uh, Dubai Expo. Mm. He was there, man, in like a stadium, just playing solo, solo cello. Wow. Not a peep. Wow. You know, it's that type of charisma. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, that that that's also selling a type of charisma as well. Sure, like one sure, cello, that translates. One cello in a big like area like mm. that. Pretty amazing. Uh, why don't you reach out to 
yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I will, man. You know, I've got all these projects going on. You know, I've got like, a lot of you years. Gotta, you, but you got to get one done a year. You got well, a lot right. of work to get. Yeah, done yeah. Here. No, I've got. I've still got a couple for the next couple of years. So what? So. What are you? What are you planning this year? Uh, it'll be a soundtrack I did for a movie uh, last year. So I'm going to pull out that. Okay, um, great. So I did this. Uh, really, it was a silent movie. A great uh, filmmaker, Jenny Thornley. Uh, she made a movie called uh, A Memory Film, A Filmmaker's Diary. And it was just all her footage she'd taken in the 70s. Of uh, She's a feminist filmmaker. And, mm. um, amazing footage. So it was really great just to get footage to play to. Score to that. Yeah, yeah. you know, but I wasn't even really scoring, man. I just got some great musicians into the studio. Right. We watched the footage and just reacted to it. Right. It was amazing, man. It's a really right. great score. It's so eight, 80 minutes mm -hmm. and it's just a very organic way of, of playing and, you know, she was a bit stressed out. She's like, oh, come on, you haven't shown us anything. I was All like, right. don't worry. It's, it's going to be fine. So yeah. I had Matt McMahon on piano, Gary, oh, Daly, great, great. Gary Daly on accordion and my brother James and it just worked. You just watch the footage and you do a couple of takes and, you know, you see if things work and not and then, themes built so and you know you create themes and do all that sort of stuff and you know it goes on and and how was her reaction loved it loved so did, it. tears did, did, it's, it really works really really well and it works better than if you had scored something really right, you know right. what i mean it's organic you look at the footage sometimes you hear some you know someone react to just a particular movement you go wow that's actually just composed for that you know mm, moment so mm. Uh, it's an, definitely an organic and risk-taking way of doing it. Sure, it's very sure. Risky. It's the opposite way. Yeah, know, it's very normal. risky. But as um, the guy, uh, Sean uh, Kerry, who um, recorded it, he said, mate, you, 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 people create that in six months. Mm. You know what I mean? You, mm. still, you just did it you know, in that yeah. very short space of time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it certainly is a gift. Well, you've got to just get the, the juices flowing, but you also yeah. got to have the belief that you can do it. You know, right. Because also she was stressed out with the saying, come on, Joe, there's got to be something. You know, you want to guide. But she'd give me guide tracks of what kind of sound she wanted. Mm. I'm playing a little bit of cello on that as well, because some of the tracks she had right. given me had cello on it. I thought, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, great. So there you go. And is, is there going to be a screening of it? Yeah, it's, when, when it's already it? screened. Oh, uh, right. It's already been uh, screened a couple of times at a couple of film festivals in here in the Dendi in Newtown, oh, which great. I missed. Can't remember which film festival, and then and the women's uh, film festival in Melbourne. There'll be great. another screening uh, end of uh, March. Great, great. Yeah. So getting back to Wonka. Yeah, tell me. Now you would have seen this when you were a kid, right? Yeah, it was. And it was a bit scary, actually. Yeah, it, it was. There was very a much bit, so. It wasn't just a you know because it, it was filmed that, very dark. I don't but know. That's, who... But that's what was so fascinating about the character. You didn't know which angle he was coming from. Yeah. And like that opening. Opening scene when he comes out with the cane, you, yeah. you know he he Improvised made that, that up. Yeah, 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 it was incredible. And, and insisted that that needs to be in the film, or yeah, I'm it not was doing perfect. it. perfect. But it just encapsulates the character yeah. in that one moment. Yeah, just you, you don't know where he's come from. He's coming out this frail man with his walking stick, <laughs> yeah. and suddenly he does a flip twirl and comes yeah. up and yeah. spontaneous. Yeah, yeah, spontaneous. But it's also fun. You know, there's an element of fun and humour and, and the whole lot. But yeah, there is a type of sadness and loneliness to mm. it, isn't it, in, in his character? There is. Isn't yeah, it? There yeah. is that kind of like, yeah, as I say, melancholy that, you know, you just kind of like, yeah, you, you, you sympathise with him if you're mm. in the arts. Mm. Maybe some people find him annoying mm. or they don't like him. But There's a beautiful scene at the end when Charlie gives back the gobstopper and mm. just the look on yeah. Gene Wilder's face. Yeah. It's like he's found, he's found his heir. Yeah, you know, but it's, it's a, also just representative of the kid being good hearted oh, of course of course but he, you know he, I mean? but he need he charlie um mm. willie was looking for that in the mm. world yeah exactly and, Char and charlie had what he'd been searching it's a for it's a, it's but it's also representative of the world we live in you know what i mean you know mm. there's the people that do the right thing you know mm. even his grandfather didn't do the right thing and that, that, and that, that joe you, grandpa joe yeah. and you know what i, I always had a, a problem <laughs> with with joe yeah. this guy <laughs> He, and, you know, um, Tahir picked this as his favourite film yeah. as well. I, mean, yeah. I, I, I yeah. brought this up with Tahir. Yeah. Here we have, and of course, this is the, the obvious one at the end when he gets Charlie to drink the drink yeah. and they float up. The thing before that, we have bedridden Joe yeah, yeah, being served on. Yeah. His mother doing all yeah. the washing. Um, Charlie running around yeah. uh, left, right and centre. He gets a golden <laughs> ticket. Suddenly yeah, he's so on his feet doing <laughs> twirls, dancing around. <laughs> he, he's <laughs> cured. <laughs> I thought, what a prick, yeah, you know. know. He's just been ailing, this, you know. This guy. He's on compo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's just been on compo, got yeah. the kid working. Right? Yeah. It's like, that, and that out of the gates, so I'm like, Charlie has had this bad influence in yeah. his life, yet Charlie still has 
a strong moral yeah. compass at the end, yeah. which made the character of Charlie that more endearing, mm. you know? No, look, I, I just, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with Grandpa Joe. And he's also the one that's trying to instill the badness in him, you know? Right. But also, he, Grandpa Joe's kind of letting him dream and giving him, you know, it's like, don't give up, you're going to find that golden ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's No, no, him he's telling him, get the, I want yeah, the golden yeah, ticket, yeah. get out there and buy yeah, more yeah, chocolate. Yeah, you know? yeah. oh, <laughs> that's unbelievable, man. What a, what a great, uh, look, I've got to watch that movie again. Oh. You're making me reminisce. Yeah, brilliant. But, yeah, it's, and it's all the little tests for Charlie throughout it and you know he, and he's just a, a good kid you know kid, he, he, re he represents the goodness in the world that that uh that Willy Wonka's looking for yeah that's it and I uh, did you see the most recent one no yeah. I saw uh, Johnny Depp oh yeah, yeah. and I, I, love, I love Johnny Depp's work I love um Tim Burton's work but I, it just didn't do it for yeah, me. Yeah, no, I, I just look, I, you can't, you can't, you can't but make then, a but remake, then they, then you they can't. Did, then they did the other one, the prequel, yeah, the most yeah, recent yeah. one. And? I, I just you, can't, you, I haven't you, seen it, I can't. My, I, my, my, my issue for it mm. was just the, the, the Willy Wonka's character starts here, yeah. And finishes here, and there's no story arc to the they, character. They're just you know? trying to capitalize. I don't like that idea of capitalizing on something that's already brilliant. You know what I mean? It's already mm. brilliant. Like you, you don't, you can't add yeah, any more to that. Yeah, sure. It's filmed beautifully. The songs are great. And Gene Wilder, how how will you ever top Gene Wilder? You can't. He's he's a genius, mate. He was perfect for that role right. as well. I, I would have wondered um, who was uh, who was who also else? up. Yeah. For that. Yeah. yeah, he had, yeah, he, he was Willy Wonka. <laughs> Beautiful. And just the little looks, he, he like the little looks off to the side and just the mannerisms. Oh. Uh, yeah, he, he was brilliant. It's a great, man, you're making me reminisce. If you want to view paradise, paradise simply look around and view it. it. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing to it. But you know what I love about that song as well? That uh, There's a very dissonant, uh, like um, like a bunch of notes in the beginning, a cell of notes in the middle, dun, 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 whatever it is, and it's it's very dissonant to what the actual um, you know beautiful tune that follows, and mm. it just runs throughout it. It's a bit creepy. Mm -mm. It's a bit creepy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I can't I can't really sing the intervals, but yeah. So yeah, that's a really beautiful song and a genius song as well. It's beautiful. Have you ever thought of doing an album of some of your favorite music from nah, that time? No, nah, mate. Well, you know, that would sound great on nah, the. I'll have, I'll have a look, but not not really. <laughs> I'll see how I go. <laughs> when, when you when, you when I run to, out of a when message, you get to your fortieth um, yeah, you know, year of might as well just do Celine Dion songs. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, nah, it's it's look. I'll I'll do something at some point which has got some songs related to it. You know, sometimes I feel like belting a couple of tunes out. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But uh, no, nah, at the moment I think I want to stick with the serious. Keep it serious. Keep the music serious. Yeah, sure. Not yourself. Yeah. And yeah. We'll, see, we'll see how we go. Well, speaking of well, not keeping it serious. Did you see yeah. the um, the Willy Wonka experience that they had? Overseas, I think it might have been in uh, England or somewhere. No, what was that? It was like experience the chocolate factory. Oh, I'd love that. And yeah, me too. Yeah. I heard about that. This is going to be great. Yeah. Then I saw an article on it. Yeah. I got a video, and I'm going to have to show you afterwards well, the video. Yeah. For anyone um, listening, just YouTube the Willy Wonka yeah. factory uh, experience. The most abominable thing. The police were called. Children oh, yeah. crying. Oh, okay. Not it was just like they just printed like a picture of like a chocolate uh, um, chocolate factory and just stuck it oh, to a really? wall okay. and they're walking through and there's like a big candy cane just coming out of the ground but it's in an abandoned warehouse it's <laughs> like uh, uh, the photos of it are like a, 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 a woeful that's terrible man yeah. oh, no no I mean and they were ruining be like ruining children's um, dreams yeah no I mean it's uh, like you'd, again capitalising on all of this stuff just mm. don't do it just and let it, and it be the, and at the end of the most um, the, the um, last uh, Willy Wonka film that they made the the chocolate fact not to ruin it for everyone but the he creates the chocolate factory mm. I'm thinking this is going to be the best him walking in and it's the chocolate factory from no it's a big CGI chocolate factory mm. that looks nothing like the original one and it's meant to be a prequel that leads into the original and so it just for mm. me it just uh, it I just lost its luster and I didn't see any of the darkness in the character just don't do you know? it just don't do any of those movies I, don't, I just don't I don't think I, I've earmarked it maybe if I'm on the plane I'm like alright I'll check it out Yeah. but not really man I, I honestly I don't want that to again. be yeah even yeah. the Johnny Depp one I mean as, as we said you know Johnny Depp had some great roles but man that just uh, it's just for me it just changes the character mm. there's no need nah. Gene Wilder 
You know, it's almost a disrespect to Gene Wilder. You Leave can't it do that. it better. Leave it at that. You know, but then, you know, kids these days, they want to see effects and all this sort of stuff mm. and they want to sell it to a different market. But that's what was great about it. I remember seeing this as a kid. I was mm. blown away by the chocolate room. Yeah, but mm. the, the, you wouldn't get away with the Oompa Loompas now. That's the thing. You know, they had they cast, what's his name? Hugh Grant. And he got yeah. a lot of shtick for, you know, not being a dwarf. But, but then a lot of the dwarves spoke out about that. A little same, person. Sorry. Oh, so, sorry little, well, little, no, little, it is dwarf. I think. I don't, is it, uh, I don't is it still? Look, the, uh, yeah. Forgive me. I'm not trying to offend anyone. I, I think just, the M word is the one that, you know, that's the offensive use. one. Yes, but no, yeah. little person. You yeah. Know, um, you know. But a lot of them spoke out against um, saying, yeah. like, now, great, now we're, we're, we're out of work now. Yeah. You know, yeah. now yeah, we but, can't. But, but yeah. also, you know, people, I think, avoid the selling power of stars. You know what I mean? Mm, you know what mm. I mean? Like Joe Tawajas, we want a fat Arab whatever, you know, but they get Morgan Freeman. I'm not going to pull in the numbers, <laughs> am I? You know what I mean? I'd rather Morgan Freeman play yeah. the fat Arab yeah, get, Egyptian. Get eating, Morgan. Yeah, the get fat, in the fat suit, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, that's the thing that's that's also very hard in this day and age. I don't want to get into the whole wokiness of it, but, you know, mm. you can't act anymore. You can't. What's the point of going to act and then learn an accent? You can't, mm. you know. Mm. You can't do it anymore. So it's it's like you have to find as best as your ability a person that's actually that person yeah you know what yeah. i mean but yeah you know, i'd be all for morgan freeman playing you know my story jo you know what i mean Mo they'll put in numbers morgan freeman is joseph <laughs> Joe <Tawagos. Tawagos. laughs> no but i mean it, it, it's pulling in numbers you got to pull in numbers you yeah, know what sure. i mean and also it's you like having somebody on your album you but know? you also want a great actor too you know like something like a, a gary oldman you know yep. the the parts that he can play is like phenomenal. Yeah. That's what I want to see—a master of his craft. Mm. I want to see a Daniel Day Lewis, you yeah. know. Oh yeah, my uh, left foot. I mean, he couldn't do that now, right? Yeah, we don't but, want to go into Tropic Thunder. Yeah, but. yeah. yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. Um, but yeah, I want to see the person at the top of their field. Yeah. You know, I want to see Kate Blanchett play um, Bob Dylan. She yeah. did great, you know. Yeah. And and uh, you want to see, you know, the, yeah. a great person playing yeah you know, exactly that's what acting themselves. is that's what right? acting is you yeah. know you're taking on this persona it's, it's, i mean uh, look uh, there are certain circumstances where i understand yeah you know some you know well, there is a wealth of of uh, actors of in, in certain cultures of and that's course. fine like rami malik well like rami malik played uh yeah, freddie mercury mm -hmm. he's, he's egyptian he's mm. not you know what was uh, what was Freddie Mercury Zoroastrian? Yeah, you know what I mean. But it was close enough mm. and good enough, and everyone looked past it. Do you know what I mean? Sure, sure. So it's not like getting the exact person, but you know you should try and make an effort. But if that person isn't available, yeah, I'd like Hugh Grant as an Oompa Loompa. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take Hugh Grant. I love Hugh Grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go and see the movie because of Hugh Grant. Right. You know what I mean? If it was Peter Dinklage. Yeah. I don't know if I'd go and see yeah. the movie. It was Peter Dinklage. Yeah, he's good though, Peter Dinklage. Yeah, as uh, an Oompa Loompa, he, too serious. You know, he couldn't portray yeah, yeah, that, the suffering that of the Oompa Loompas. You know, yeah. he's Willy Wonka. He's taken them from, you know... Yeah, they, they, they were being... Um, ostracised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, persecuted. Persecuted. And he brought them to this safe yeah. environment to make chocolate. This is the controversial section of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're doing so well yeah. <laughs> until up at this point. Yeah, uh, until you start talking about yeah. Oompa Loompas, that's yeah, where Oompa people Loompa. draw the line. Yeah, tell you what. Discrimination well, they have against... somebody with naturally green hair? Yeah. I mean, they should have searched out for someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> should have... You know, they should have the Rajneesh. <laughs> they're an orange person. Come on. Or, or Trump. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, they're kind of Trump-esque, aren't they? They are. They're mini Trumps. Mini Trumps. They predicted it so so long ago. Yeah. What else we got? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we're, we're, we're doing a quick U-turn out of this topic. I'm not getting into politics on Trump. I'm not talking about well, small people. Well, he's getting people. back in. He's going to get back in. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's, people have short memories. Yeah. But there's no other candidate. There's just no candidates. Right. There's none of them. I, I can't believe it's, it's got to this point that yeah. these two are the option again. Well, it's like, just, come it's on. Like, Who's the other yeah. option? I can't. I don't know. Biden. Even know. Oh, Biden's running again. I thought he was from a cryogenically frozen. <laughs> anyway, okay, fair yeah, enough. Yeah. He's gonna, if they have a debate, the guy's just going to crap all over him. Uh, you know, Trump is uh, a bully, right? Yeah, yeah. So sure, he will, he'll just bully him, yeah. like, you know, and he hasn't got the quick thinking power Biden anymore, yeah. you know. Uh, anyway, look, that's not our politics. We don't have to deal with it. No. Good luck to them. Well, let's go for someone else that avoided politics, yeah. that didn't want to get involved. And yeah. in. he was, this gentleman was asked, to be the spokesperson in Lebanon, yeah. and he said, uh, "That's where he said you all love me now, but the moment I start playing that role, you're going to hate me." You're going to hate me, yeah, and that is no hated. other than Tahil Gibran, the the author of your favourite book, The Prophet. The Prophet, there we go. The Prophet, uh, yeah, what a great book, man. So much wisdom to be taken from this. Yeah, small it's, it's book, a beautiful you know? look. I, I someone bought it for me a long time ago, and I hated it. 
I was you, like, this is crap. Really? You read it and well, hated yeah, it? Yeah, I was just like, oh man, a bit of meandering, you know. But also the thing is, when you're young... You weren't at that give, level to appreciate mate, it. Mate, you know, I went to Sunday school, right? And they gave us a Bible, mm. you know, and we'd get taught about the Bible and all that sort of stuff. And then you'd go, and everyone had a highlight, and they'd highlight passages that they mm -hmm. liked. I used mm -hmm. to just highlight. I didn't understand anything. I go, that sounds all right. That's good <laughs> sentence structure. You know, that's all I knew. That's, uh, it just sounded like I had a good flow. But I didn't understand you highlighted the words. highlighted the index, Josh. You know, exactly. <laughs> Leviticus, that's incredible. Deuteronomy. That's an, oh, no, but it's just like... Um, uh, yeah, by the way, the cops do use the Old Testament, just in case they're like, oh, Christian, they use the Old Testament. Yeah, they use the Old Testament mm -hmm. as well. But anyway, yeah, so you don't really understand. So... Around the time we were touring in 2008 or mm. 2009, I can't mm. remember, uh, 2008 probably. Um, and you nine. Know, nine. Nine, was it? Was yeah. it nine? It was yeah, nine, yeah. probably nine then. Um, I went through a little bit of heartbreak. I remember. You remember you know? I remember. This shoulder was one to cry on. Oh, mate, th that was oh, just... No, I ended up wearing a raincoat. I wrote the whole album that. on that tour. I remember. Every sound check. Do you remember? I Even remember. And I remember one of the, on one of those nights... Um, for some reason, we couldn't get another room, and you and I shared a hotel room. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you, that you would be practicing, mm. and I was in the gig. Uh, I was in um, before the gig, having the shower. And I just remember the soundtrack <laughs> yeah. to, to, so to, to that go. trip. And I mean, then, and then you'd be staying in a hotel room next to me, yeah. and I could hear it through the wall. Yeah. So that album, uh, I'm oh, very familiar with. That book, yeah, but the book was amazing. I kept on reading. I'm going, wow, this guy guy gets me, and now I finally get him. So, which means mm. you know, certain books resonate with you at certain times, the same as uh, certain music at certain times. Yes. So it just depends on what you're going through what you can understand your level of understanding mm. um, but we can't expect a kid to understand what's written in this or right. in the bible for instance at 10 years old but do you think you, you have know? to be in that per place of heartache and the, you're more open during a time i think like there's that. a type of melancholy because the, 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 this guy is melancholy same as willy wonka same as a, you resonate with these characters mm. and the good artists if you can't create it yourself then you you resonate with um the people nearest to you you yes. know what i mean and same as i said back again with the classical musicians resonating with people that they'd like to play or a certain genre that they like to play within the classical music. Now, like, now that album you called The Prophet, yep. did you realise as during that time that that's what you were going to call the album and that's what the... Because I remember us talking about mm. that book during that time and when you were composing yeah, all Yeah, I think because I was reading but, it on the road as well, mm. it became that sentiment. You know? but that, 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 yeah, that kind of themed the, the it album. Themed the, uh, theme the album, but the heartbreak themed the album. Remember Sophie? SBK. <laughs> it was Sophie, SBK actually. SBK. It was a, <laughs> it was a track, yeah. Oh man, it got a lot of mileage out of that. You did. Yeah, good old you, Sophie. You did. I remember once we were at the, on the back of a plane and it was weird. It was like being at the back of the bus because you had the back row. It was three yeah. seats and this little plane that we were yeah. flying out of Mm. I don't know, Tamworth yeah. or something. Mm. And we're all sitting up the back and, yeah, oh, yeah man, we're good crammed time. into the good seat. Time. It's funny yeah. how you look back on things, you know, but I remember, you know, the effort that I went to, you know, the heartbreak, I, making I, collages and, yeah. oh my God, the, the things that you went. The conversations. Oh, what do you, what do you oh, mean? I, yeah. I felt like I was going through the heartbreak with yeah, you. Yeah, well, that's what happens, you know, it's that very, uh, you know, we put it into the music, you know, I got yeah. three albums out of it, squeezed <laughs> the hell out of that. SBK were her, were, were her initials, so I had, yes. a, I had a track, Goodbye SBK. That I was remember the finisher. that, Goodbye SBK. It was, it was a series of three albums. It was uh, Concerto of the Greater Sea. Yes. Which was, no, it was um, The Prophet first, which was The Prophet, Heart. Yeah, then. and I had that deep poem. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. the Ud, mm -hmm. you know, weeps for you. My Ud weeps for you. <laughs> you know, all that sort of stuff. You read, read back and you go, it's a bit cringy, but it's quite beautiful. <laughs> It's intense. Well, it's heartbreak. It's intense. You're and in actually, a, yeah. that album, The Prophet, my album, if you listen to the first note of that album, man, that's a bullet to the heart. It's yeah, like, yeah. Poof, you know, I all the tracks seen that are so in hard. St. Peter's Church. Yeah. That's when I brought Annie along. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Annie. That's right. We're just here in Newtown. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it was just like, yeah, but every track. That music. But it changed. My music had changed. Yeah, my yeah. music had changed, you know, into. But that's good. That's, yeah, it's exactly. Great. It's a growing. Want. It's a growing. Yeah. It's a growth in the music. So that album was a bit deep. And then we had the Hour of Separation. You know, Love yep. Knows Not Its Own Depth Until the Hour of Separation. Mm -hmm. Also based on Gibran. Um, the, that, Aaron, that you did that one in New York, didn't you? Did yeah, that in I New remember York. you went to New York. That's that where one, Goodbye yeah. SBK is on it. Yes. So that was kind of letting her go. Yes. That's it. She's not coming back. Yep. And then Concerto of the Greater Sea, which he, also in this he says, um, uh, it's um, a return and you're like the Greater Sea and you're returning again. And mm. so that's also from the same book. So mm. it's that three mm. uh, that came from this book. Yeah. You know, and I always love this poetry. And the track names are like Seafarer and, you know, all these themes that appear in the farewell of the book. And what is, like for me with that book, I always remember relationships. He was always, always got great insights into relationships. Well, it is relationships with people and, you know, how to deal with all these things on marriage and, you know, yeah. keep the, let there be spaces in your togetherness. Yeah. 
drink the wins, yeah. Yeah, drink the same tea, but not from the same cup. Yeah, it's wine, but that's all right. Oh, right. Same, okay. <laughs> same tea. Another one, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I yeah. do drink, drink from the same wine, from not, but not from the same uh, cup. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Are there are there any specific life lessons that you've you've got from that book that is? Have... Uh, you know, when you give of yourself, I think that's the thing. I think there's a lot of uh, I don't want to say I don't want to get controversial virtue signaling. Mm, so it's mm-hmm. again, you got to really give of yourself and and uh, you know have to do it genuinely. You know, because there's people that exist, and you know them. You can kind of identify them. They they go to a specific cause. Mm-hmm. Actually, one one line that sticks in my head. I don't know if it's good or bad. Is he says, uh, uh, "You that are uh, you know healthy or whatever, do not limp before the lame, deeming it kindness." Hmm. You're right. Yes. And usually when I'm just walking faster mm. than a person in a wheelchair, I'm just going, <laughs> do not limp before yeah. the lame. I'm doing cartwheels. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, but it's just also, you know, like, you know, don't pat yourself on the back sort yes. of thing. You know, people yeah. pat themselves on the back. It's like these clips on, on Facebook now and stuff. They give a homeless guy a bag of food and they have to film it. Oh, you know, they make yeah, thousands worse. of bucks off the views. Yeah, no, that's you know. terrible. You know, it's I, like, I remember terrible. there was one in Sydney, I think it was, where this guy gave an old lady flowers mm. and then... Oh, I got all these millions, and she and she said, if I knew I was going to be exploited like yeah, this, I would never have accepted well, that's the, the thing. flowers. No, but it's what also is... those desperate people. Of course, they'll take the bag of food, or they'll take the hundred yeah, yeah, bucks, yeah, or whatever. Sure, you go, sure. what does this mean to you? Yeah. Well, I was, you know, I was being evicted. What does this mean? Can we film your eviction? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just terrible. Yeah, Look, yeah. what are we doing as humans? I know, and and those prank people too. You know, yeah. in, in a supermarket, they go up and take the chips off some oh. guy, and it's like. Man, the, yeah. like, I, I want to see those people this go tick, down. Yeah, this you know? TikTok generation of, of uh, you know, attention seeking. So I saw one guy, he, he entered someone's house just for views. Really? So, yeah, you know what I mean? Just uh, don't do that. break and enter. Yeah, right. well, he's, he's, he was up in the court. On charges? But, yeah. Yeah, well, he's a t- an influencer. Just don't do it. It's just yeah. we're creating a, a generation of idiots, you yeah. know what I mean? And they'll do anything for views. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. dance around. Like, just stop it. <laughs> you know, just stop it. Pick up an instrument. Yeah, work on you it. You know, I'm still looking for my next viral one. <laughs> this is from a guy who goes, plays in a bathtub, you know? <laughs> no, but it's, look, it's about presenting it in a fun way. But I, as long as that doesn't... Um, you know, annoy other people in their sure. private and personal space and things like that. Don't sure. do that. It's illegal, sure. actually. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, no one really takes it up. That's why yeah. people keep on doing it. Uh, what are we talking but, about? But the great so thing, that, that the great... taught me that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cahil Gibran taught me, don't be yeah. an idiot. So the giving the love, yeah. uh, you know, also about love where he says love as, as it can crown you can also crucify you. Mm. And that's the thing, you know, man. Love can be any sort, sort of thing. It's not, it's not also, it can be great and bad mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. But he has a lot of that juxtaposition. And I do like that, you know, um, uh, your, 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 you know, your, your sorrow is your happiness unmasked and stuff like that. Mm. He has... He has beautiful the, quotes. The, the, the similarity that I feel that you've uh, either consciously yeah. or subconsciously taken for, from his lessons is that idea of inclusiveness. Mm. And like you said before, how you don't create your music to be from a specific region mm. or a specific identity, yeah. that it's world music, that it's open to it's everyone. A, it's a universal and message. He's, and he's very got. much like that, very universal. And like he would talk about religion and saying... He's open to all all I, I all ideologies, all religions, all thoughts. Like he's open to, you know, taking taking everyone's um, background on board. It's not it's not just and one. and I think uh, also because he um, he wrote this in America, you know yes. that's the thing. So he also was an immigrant. Um, yes. So you know from a little te- a little village in Lebanon, and then having to adapt. Mm. Uh, in in America, and that's where he became really famous. I mean, sure, sure. You know, that's where his writings really took off, and because uh, he went Mary there when Haskell you were, helped him out. Like you came to Australia when you were what, when three I was or two, four, yeah. Two, yeah. two, yeah. And he, I think he was like four or so when he, yeah. he went to America. So there is that. Yeah, there's that yeah. parallel. I thought it was a bit older than that, maybe ten or thirteen. I oh, thought. Was he? Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, maybe. Okay. I thought okay. I will have to okay, check. Okay, we'll have maybe, to double yeah. check that. Yeah. Just check that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's still at an impressionable age. But also again, adapting, adapting to a foreign landscape, having. A uh, Middle Eastern voice, but adapting to a, 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 a you know a Western white landscape. You sure. Know, he's, yeah, and that's what happened. I think yeah, there are parallels between me and the good old Gibran. Sure. Good old well, Gibbers. you know, yeah. The the um, there's a lot of great things to take from that. Yeah. As a have been a lot of great things to take from our experiences, Mate, my friend. What a, like, what a time! Whenever I go to Townsville, I always send you a photo of that <laughs> rocker, that, rock. that major rocker. Just rock wouldn't that we, take the leap. No, you <laughs> wouldn't. We because <laughs> to put in contact, great view from up there. Yeah. We went up there. And there was this platform 
um, that we, yeah. and Akmal and I jumped over, and the other people that were with yeah. us, um, locals, they jumped over. They were showing us. Yeah, yeah, we jumped over, and you're like, I no. can't do it. No, I'm like, I could see just it. Do it, Joe. Just because and like, in my head, I, I can't do it. In my head, I have this ability to see the end. You know right. what I mean? And in that and end, saw it saw me going down, down and yeah. breaking your wrist. That's why I don't do exercise. You know what I mean? <laughs> On the treadmill, I might injure myself. Yoga might overstretch. Just don't do it to yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just got to be kind of jogging. No, there goes yeah. my ankles. You know, and I meet people the same. I meet fit people with, with, uh, well, you know, with all sorts of ailments. ailments yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Oh, I got a dodgy knee white from jogging. Well, yeah. I'm glad I don't jog. <laughs> you know I mean? There we go. <laughs> My but, point, exactly. Well, the last time I was in Townsville, I went to take a photo with that, um, but it was an uh, overcast, foggy day, yeah, and you couldn't see it. Yeah, yeah. Townsville. I haven't been there in ages. I, I, yeah, I know that view. It's yes. very funny. And, uh, you know, we can't forget Rockhampton. Oh, good old Rocky. You, yeah, good both old, of us eulogized in Akmal's routine. I'd love to see the footage. Cre- you know, I can't yeah. find it. I used to have it. I used to have it on a Grant had, yeah. had, had done a DVD, but I just don't know where it is anymore. I've still, I got all that old footage too that I gave you on the stick, but the stick never worked. The stick never worked. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have that footage yeah, on a hard drive. That would come in handy now. I do probably, have that footage on yeah. a hard drive. And, um, yeah, yeah, that would, a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, 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 that was a long drive that we took, the road trip. It was Ch- amazing. Chasing cows. On the side of the road, frosty mango, uh, you know. (laughs) Those those are the things that could come into play. Now, they're good social media. We were ahead of our time. We were. We were were just filming stuff just for us, left, right and centre. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Akmar not feeling great. Oh, that next morning after the big night, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Certain magician that were named, uh, remain nameless. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've had many good times in the past, Joe, and I look forward to many more. Yeah, man, I hope so. Well, Thanks for having me, Joel. This has been great. Thank you, my man. Great chatting with you. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Joe.